So every year the, from uh, November 25th to the December 10th, the world actually observes 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. This campaign is aimed to raise awareness and actually mobilize action to end all forms of violence against women and girls and even men, because most of the time the men have been forgotten as far as this conversation is concerned. But today is the 10th of December, 2024. And uh, to mark the end of the 16 days of activism is the Human Rights Day. So this beautiful Tuesday, of course, we're going to have the conversation that has been going on for the last, uh, from, uh, for the 16 days of uh, activism and what these 16 days actually mean going forward. So joining me on set for this very first episode of this, I don't know whether it's a podcast that we haven't even figured out the name yet, is Harriet from Tanzania. Please introduce yourself and uh, tell us more about you, a little bit about you, not more. Thank you so much, Caleb. Yes. Uh, my name is Harriet Chua, the United Nations uh, Youth Fellow 2024. Mm -hmm. Yes but I also work at the United Nations Association of Tanzania. Okay. So when you speak about GBV, yeah. uh, it's the 16 days of activism against the gender-based violence, yeah. which we all know it's a global campaign that runs annually from the 25th of November yeah. to the 10th of December. Mm -hmm. The International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, okay. which is also a Human Rights Day. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the campaign, it tends to focus on raising awareness about the prevalence of the gender-based violence and advocating mm -hmm. for global action to eliminate violence against women and mm -hmm. girls. That's mm -hmm. what we all know so far. Okay. But um, uh, when you speak about gender-based violence, it's that's not based on only women and girls. And girls, yeah. It encompasses also men yeah, yes no, because course. uh although we all say that men are being perpetrators yeah but they also tend to to be the victims to encounter yes being the victim uh, in terms of emotional violence yeah. but also the economic violence okay yes okay nice thank you so much so some of the key messages that of course we have this year is we're looking at various reasons why this has been going on. Uh, people are talking about uh, the conflict that is going on around the world right now, it's causing a lot of displacement, increasing the risk of violence for million, millions of women and girls. Uh, they're talking about uh, emergencies and all of that, you know, um, sexual and uh, sexual uh, experiences in, in families and relationships and all of that. But also this is being talked about in the context of refugees and everything that is going on in Sudan. You know, we have seen so much about Palestine and all of that. Um, uh, but uh, the good thing is that violence against women, girls, and, and, and men is actually preventable and people need to have conversations and people need to be taught. How do you think people should be taught about uh, how to really prevent or, or how to reduce? We start by reducing, then we get somewhere where we, we now have zero GBV in our communities. How do we do this? How do we get there? Um. Uh... As you know, I can say the planet, uh, when it comes to human, we are uh, basing on uh, male gender and female gender, I can say. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it means uh, I think we should unite as one. Okay. And uh, how do we unite? We both have to make ourselves victims, meaning the men and mm -hmm. the women. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we should know that even men, we recognize that they tend to obtain that, but... Yeah. Even though they face abuse, they often in, in silence because of yeah. the societal expectations, mm. which they discourage them from speaking out. So when we go to men and mm. tell them that we hear you, we understand we are also victims, but we yeah. have to unite so as to end this violence, then I guess mm. that is the first best measure that we can do. Okay. Perfect. Um, I was I, yeah. I was reading I was reading an article by you and women uh this morning and they have some shocking statistics actually. They're, they're saying that one in three women actually experience violence in their lifetime. And they go ahead and say that 60% of female homicides were committed by partners or family members. These are people who are closer to, you know, the girls, these are people who are closer to the men. And how do we really like localize this conversation and, and, and make it logical and make it make sense inside people's homes now? Okay. Because, because if 60% of female homicides were committed by partners or family members, then 
we really need to do something? Sure. That's a very, very good thing. So yeah. one thing that we should know is that most of the girls, there was one podcast I was listening okay. of uh, a, a girl from Malawi. Yeah. She was experienced. She was uh, saying that the girl was beaten, mm. but that girl was a wife to a person, uh -huh. okay. like a man. But mm -hmm. she could not do anything simply mm. because she could not afford to go live somewhere else. She didn't uh, have that money. So okay. there is that sense of economic dependency. For sure. Yes. And at the end of the day, we should both realize that men also face violence. Mm -hmm. Meaning, there is a time they cannot go back home simply because they do not have money. Okay. They don't have food to bring on the table. Mm. Yes, so mm. that is already gender-based violence, but okay. they do not know. Mm. Yes, so uh, small things, there are times where by a person might, maybe that is her life, without mm. knowing automatically he or she is on depression. Okay. So one thing you have to understand, like everyone has to understand, is that your what you're facing is a violence. Mm. What I take, that is life, that is not life, because okay. that's not how we live. Mm -hmm. People the, the people might have uh, like 20 years of life in depression without yeah. knowing that I have depression. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That sense of stress that both men and, and uh, women, they tend to face, once yes. they recognize that is the problem and you have to change it, I think uh, that is uh, that mm -hmm. is the thing that I can say. I really hope I've answered your question. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You, you, are, you are talking about, you know, uh, men, uh, women and girls being aware of themselves. And also you you touched on economic something around economic empowerment because you was you were looking at a situation where you know like like you and women are saying 60 percent of these cases are uh, done by people who are part of the family so if this woman or if this girl is empowered economically then she can at least maybe afford to go and rent a house somewhere uh, somewhere else to begin afresh life afresh again but if she can't if she doesn't have any money then she is going to be forced to keep staying with this man this abusive man or if the man doesn't have any money they are going to be forced to continue living in this environment where maybe the woman is abusive or maybe if the man doesn't open up uh open up enough they're not going to really tell their family that maybe they're not in a position to provide and the society is going to you know uh do so much harm to them at the end of the day but then again, now you talking about um, talking about economic empowerment to girls and everything. Now we need to, you know, see a, a ways of taking this empowerment conversation into their pockets now. Because now we're talking about money. Now we're talking about job opportunities. Now we're talking about opening up industries uh, so that the girls can fit, so that the boys can actually fit as well. Looking at the case of Tanzania right now, I I I don't know how you guys are as far as job creation for the young people is concerned, especially young women. One thing that we should know is that uh, we have to create our own jobs through the education that we receive. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is the true meaning of education. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, jobs are there. Mm -hmm. Even at this week, there are jobs that were announced. I think okay. for that. Mm -hmm. But that is not the only thing that we have in our basket. Yeah, for sure. When you're given, uh, when you're given education, uh, it means you can, uh, you can come up something and create something yeah jobs can be created if you want if you if you want and you have to be creative yeah when you be creative and uh you use the knowledge that you're taught in class mm. let's say uh keep it in the practical way from the theory way i yeah. believe everyone has a job mm. having a job uh, it doesn't require you to be employed yeah yes nice so yes. i think I think the point you're, you, you're talking about is as young people, we should not wait for the government to do uh, everything for us. The level of education that we have enable, uh, enables us to do something that is empowering, something that can help us make a living. And if we all economically empowered yes. in, in a way, then we can be able to stand to these perpetrators and everything. And that's a very good point. So let's let's bring yes, in- Yes, and- uh, uh, uh -huh. Yes, and uh, to add a small thing is that uh, um, opportunities cannot find you at first. You have yeah. to go look for them. Then for later, sure. they come looking for you. 
So yeah. I really suggest and I urge, I, I guess that would be a lesson um, for another episode, but mm -hmm. in everything that you do, you yeah. have to first look for the opportunity. You have to be proactive. And that's when and... uh, the government can give you the opportunities, but if you cannot come and grab them, then no yeah. one will help you that until yourself. Thank you so much. I, I believe that is now on us as young people uh, to really be proactive and really see what we can do with the skill set that we have. Get to volunteer, get to be part of you know startups, create startups with your friends and, and, and everything. Let's go back to the culture now. We have a lot of cultural norms and harmful practices that you know uh, still push this, this uh, narrative of GBV, talking about early marriages, FGM and everything. In Kenya, for, for example, FGM is banned. But we still have some traditional leaders who insist on girls being mutilated. I want to uh, I want you to paint a picture for someone like me who has never been to Tanzania. How is FGM like, and how is uh, these practices of early marriages like in your country? So when we come to breaking down of the gender-based violence, when it comes to Africa, I can say the roots of GBV they lie in the power of imbalances, okay. harmful cultural practices, and societal norms that they okay. perpetuate the inequality. Mm. As you say, for instance, to the United Republic of Tanzania, the early marriages are normalized. Mm. Girls are young as the teen are married off and yeah. denied their right to education and the future. Meanwhile, as you said in Kenya, yeah. they still experience the female genital mutilation, yeah. which tends to persist despite the legal bans, I believe, yeah. Yeah, for sure. and uh, driven by the tradition and the social pressure. Mm. That is when it comes to part um women and girls mm. but on the other side of the coin uh men they often draw grow up in environments that equate dominance with masculinity okay no they mm -hmm. face pressure that uh to assert control or they at the end of the day they tend to suppress their emotions yeah. which it can either which it leads to the cycle of violence that we are talking about mm. like some men too they experience emotional abuse or uh economic control but yeah. their pain is often dismissed because okay. how can a man tend to say their problems a man a man you, you're not allowed to show any weakness you know that that's what they say but i think emotions are yes. emotions emotions yes. are emotions so if you feel a certain way feel free and and, and i remember a conversation we were having with you earlier on you, you were talking about having someone who can listen to you having a, a listening ear around you Someone who can listen to you as a man without judging, without asking, without you know bringing those 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 uh, those uh, uh, sentences like you, you're a man, you should be strong and all of that. So, I think it's also very very good to see the people around us now because we are talking about men. I think it's very crucial to involve men and boys in addressing GBV. I want you now to talk about some of the programs that you have in your country that are addressing this course and are actually being an, as inclusive as including the men as well? Um, uh, when it comes to the roles that men they can play is, um, I believe both in Kenya and Tanzania, yeah. the involvement in, uh, of men and boys in addressing the GBV is critical in uh, shifting the cultural norms and prevention of violence. Yeah. Uh, I believe in Kenya, for instance, initiatives such as the Men Engagement, Men Engage Kenya, network, uh, they aim to engage men and boys in conversation yeah. about the gender equality, yeah. respectful relationship, and non-violence. Yeah. And uh, this initiative work to challenge harmful stereotypes that they promote the male dominance and female submission, which okay. often contribute to violence. Yeah. But when it comes to our side in Tanzania, programs are like uh, Tupo Pamodia, Mm. which they focus on involving men as partners in ending GBV. Uh -huh. They have made a significant strides, yes. Okay. And uh, these programs, they educate men about the impact of gender-based violence on their families, mm. communities, and they encourage them to take responsibilities to promote gender equality. Okay. Through this, engaging men and boys as allies is essential to breaking the cycle of, over, of uh, violence and um, promoting healthier relationships because... Okay. When men, when you talk to men and you recognize the violence that men also pass through as also victims and not only women, it would be easier for them to listen and to come with us as allies mm. because uh, violence cannot happen to a woman without a man. 
For sure, for sure. And I believe violence cannot happen to a man without a woman. Without a woman, yeah. So when we both recognize them as victims, then they will come together as allies, and I believe GBV be sustained. Perfect. At the end. Perfect. That's a very good explanation. That's a very good like you just like explained everything. It's it's everyone. It's it's everyone's conversation. Everybody should be, you know, pulling in and locking in and you know having this conversation going forward. Now today is uh, a very good day. I know for for very many young people across the world, it's the Human Rights Day. Yeah, and I was looking at this today, and I, I feel like I feel like young people are arising each and every day to demand their their rights. You know the case of Kenya and the demonstrations that we had the other day, and even right now as we speak, there's still you know a section of young people in Kenya who still feel like we should be holding our leaders accountable. What does Human Rights Day mean to you as a person and to the youth of Tanzania? Human Rights Day, as a human, as a Tanzania, it means yeah. it's it's a memoration. It's like a reminder that mm. we all are human at the end of the day. We sure. all are victims, no mm. matter I face violence or not. And I believe uh, it's a reminder that today we can make a change. That yeah. for the ones that are experiencing violence, yeah. we should end it. Sub mm. like subside is as, as it's possible. And mm. uh, and recognize that everyone experiences violence in their own way. Yeah. So we have to be ready to listen to them, be yeah. ready to help them. Because mm. at the end of the day, we depend on one another. For so sure. that's what this day signifies, that we have to stop violence yeah. and we can make a better future if we end this. Because okay. through this, when we end this, it means we increase more humanity, yeah. like the human nature, yes. So it's a very wonderful day. Yeah, nice. That's that's actually perfect. You, you are bringing a point of... I think I think in Tanzania you have Jama or something. You used to read that in, in primary school and all that. Where where you you care for your neighbor, where the right of your neighbor is just as important as yours. So if they're being violated, if if they're being abused in their homes at the workplaces and all of that, you should be able to speak out on behalf of them, and they should be able to speak up also on behalf of you as well. Before we finish, I think uh, a platform or um, uh, an avenue where I think. GBV has, has really like spread so much and the hate and the and and the and the and the you know the let's just say the hate so much has been spreading online. I think the, the digital life as well has really spread this so much because somebody can just go on your on your picture on Facebook or wherever and they, they can just like abuse you like proper, you know. So I think there should be a way also for us as young people to really moderate whatever it is that we post on social media, whatever it is that we comment on. Uh, somebody else's picture or video and all of that, we should ensure that we keep tabs on that as well. If you have anything else you want to share before we finish, Harriet, this is your time now. Um, One thing that I can actually say is that it's a reminder for all of us yeah. that when, uh, when we talk about the gender-based violence, mm. we all should know it's a shared responsibility. Yeah. And GBV is not a woman's issue, nor a man's issue. It's a mm. human issue. Okay. Like women, men, boys and girls, we are all affected in different ways. Yeah. And we need an open dialogue, a mm. mutual understanding and a shared responsibility. For sure. When we fight the GBV, we are fighting for healthier families, stronger communities and society where everyone can live in dignity and peace. Yes. So it's a call to all of us Africans and the world that let us choose action over apathy, yeah. courage, silence and mm. unity over division because i believe together we can create a future where gender-based violence has no place thank you so much for your time and i agree i agree the crisis of gender-based violence is very urgent and there's no excuse for violence against women girls and men Harriet, thank you so much for your time i hope to catch up with you again next time and uh thank you. again happy independence day i know it was yesterday because we're looking at this on the 10th but yeah, Tanzania is a beautiful place. I have a few friends already there. I want to come to Zanzibar, uh, come to Tanzania one day and go to Zanzibar. Is it as good as they advertise it? Oh yeah, it's very good. <laughs> okay, thank Welcome you. Welcome to Tanzania. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Take care. Thanks.